We Americans drive a ton. As my friend Rohit said, in Europe they came up with the 24 Hours of Le Mans as this great test of driver and vehicle endurance. And then we Americans say, I'm just gonna drive eight hours to the race, get some Chick-fil-A and go home. So when Americans buy an electric vehicle, one of the first things they think about is, can I road trip this thing a thousand miles that one time a year that I do it? Well, I'm on my first big road trip. I'm 900 miles into it. And I've been fast charging quite a bit at different stations like this. And I have quite a few thoughts on what this whole process has been like. And I kind of want to go through those one by one. I'll start with the planning and then I will go into station reliability because that's a big thing on a lot of people's mind. And then I will hit on both the placement of these chargers and my overall impressions about the whole trip and what it's like to road trip in an EV. But first, let's talk about how long this is gonna to take to charge. And my Chevy Bolt is pretty much the worst case scenario for road tripping. It takes 45 to 50 minutes to go from 25% to 80% charge or thereabout. Newer vehicles like the Ionic 5 or Kia EV6 <clears throat> will do the same thing in about 15 or 20 minutes, similar to a Tesla or some other newer EVs that are coming out. I started planning this trip a couple days before I left. And to do that, I jumped on a better route planner, which I think is probably one of the best route planning apps that are out there, maybe with the exception of Tesla's inbuilt app in their cars, but I don't have experience with that. What a better route planner does is it takes all of the parameters of your car and applies them against a route that you choose. And it can also upload things like real-time weather and real-time traffic if you have the premium plan to better refine what kind of range you're going to get between stops on that route. And what it does is it picks chargers along that route according to your preferences. Do you want to charge more frequently? Do you want to charge you know, really long and go really long stints? Or do you kind of want to go in between? And in between is probably going to be one of your fastest options. And then once you do that, you let it run a simulation to see um, basically what route you should take. You can change your route. You can change all sorts of parameters. You can go into the weeds on that a lot if you really want to. So I ran the route. I came up with a charging scheme for me from my home in Urbana, Illinois, which is where I was going. And then I did something interesting that I'm really glad I did. I actually printed it off, which is <laughs> So MapQuest 2007. So a better route planner has a navigation feature, but when I got in the car, I realized that the app was so slow on my iPhone 7, I just didn't want to use it. So I switched over to Waze immediately. I put in the destination of the first charger and I went for it. The interesting thing about this was as I got close to that first charger, since I had it off on my paper and kind of in my head, I knew that first charger, I only needed to charge like 10 minutes. And if my efficiency was good enough, I could actually skip that charger and go to the second one. Well, my efficiency was tending higher, so I put in the destination into ways for the second charger and just went there instead. Now, there are two other apps that I used. One was the Electrify America app. And the reason I used that is because I pretty much exclusively preferred Electrify America chargers for one simple reason, well, two, but the first is there's a big network and each location has four to eight chargers. And that's really important because sometimes one or two of these chargers may not be operational or it might not play well with your vehicle. So you might need to jump to another one. And I found myself doing that a lot. So that's why I picked Electrify America. They have a big network and they have lots of chargers at each location. And the second reason is I signed up for the app and I got a special discount if I used their, if I signed up for their uh, member program for the trip. And so that allowed me to kind of stay in network and, and use that. But either way, I use their app to look at the chargers before I get to them. So I key in the next charger and I say, okay, what's the status on this? Are people using it? Is it full? Are some of the chargers offline? And the Electrify America app is really good in that regard that it tells you that information. And so when I got here in Columbus on the way out, 
I saw that the next charger out near Dayton, Ohio was actually, the entire location was offline. So I charged up extra here so that I could make it the whole way to Indianapolis. And I knew that because of the Electrify America app. There's another app called PlugShare that is similar in that it can tell you information about chargers, but it's all crowdsourced. So that app, people check in on chargers and I'll look at them and see if there's any reviews in the past day or two. If there is positive reviews, I'm pretty sure that charger's good to go. If there's a lot of negative reviews, obviously skip that charger. So I used all four of these apps to kind of navigate my route and that is a big pain but it, it is necessary for the time being because there just isn't that many chargers out here. It, at best, you'll find a fast charger maybe every 50 miles uh, that isn't a Tesla charger. And so until we get these at every exit, uh, which is the gas station model, um, you're pretty much gonna have to do this. And that I would expect will be probably another 10, 15, 20 years until most of the US is that way. So let's talk about reliability, which is why I had to jump some chargers in the first place. And overall, reliability has been good at the stations I've gone to or the locations I've gone to. Sometimes one of the stations will not work properly with my vehicle and I would have to switch to another one. I would say about 25% of the time I had to switch to a different unit, unfortunately. And the biggest issue was in Indianapolis where I actually started a charge, went into Walmart, came back out and it had failed. And that was, kind of a big annoyance because I lost quite a bit of time. So reliability is a concern, but it isn't a deal breaker if you're on a network like EA with multiple chargers per site. But still, check things ahead in the app before you go to a particular location, uh, just because that location could be entirely out. Uh, and then you could potentially be stuck in a place without other options. So reliability is a concern and it does need to get better. So I also wanted to talk about where these chargers are placed. And this is pretty typical. I'm on the edge of a Walmart parking lot. It is well lit, there are security cameras, but it's still the edge of a Walmart parking lot at one in the morning. And there's obviously some security concerns inherent with that, especially when you're sitting here for an hour, potentially, and maybe even sleeping in your car. The other thing is, while this is at a Walmart, the thing I've realized is that Walmart closes. And some of these are at a Sheets or a Wawa, and Sheets and Wawa sometimes close. And if you roll into these at night and you expect a bathroom, you very well might be out of luck. I actually had to kind of resort to some uh, nature bathrooms uh, here. Something to keep in mind, late at night, I wish there was facilities available at every place all the time. You don't run into this with gas stations because the gas stations don't pump gas if they're not open, but these pump get pump electric all the time. And finally, with regards to location, sometimes to get to where you wanna go, say you wanna to go to McDonald's or Starbucks, you're going to have to cross some traffic. And as you know, in America, a lot of our roads aren't really made for pedestrian crossing, especially if it's like a four lane uh, multi-use highway thingy. And that could be quite dangerous, especially if you have a family in tow or other things that you need to bring with you. So something to think about when you are at these locations, your food or whatever you expect to get to might be a little more difficult than it should be. Now, I think all these issues will work themselves out in time, but as of today in 2022, uh, it definitely needs some improvement. What are my overall thoughts about this trip? Well, honestly, I feel like it was a success. I'm at my last charge here, getting this before I head back home. But I, I do have some thoughts just on why I believe it's felt very successful to me. And for one, things have gone off more or less without a hitch. But for another, it has to do with your perspective. 
So if you're of the perspective you know, of replacing the gas station model where you're gonna go as fast as you can, get there as quick as possible, you probably are gonna have a bad time. But if you change your perspective, you are going to have a much different time. So for me, I decided I was going to do this. It's gonna take four more hours to charge than it would if I wasn't charging. And I knew that beforehand. And so my brain switched into this mode of, it's relax mode. You can take your time when you stop. And that's different from how I've always treated road trips in the past. And honestly, I really enjoy that more relaxed feeling. Maybe it's because I'm getting old, but I think a lot of other people might enjoy that as well. So that's a huge thing that I've kind of realized road tripping in an electric car. As for the rest of things and the infrastructure, my feelings on it, it does need a lot of improvement as I pointed out. And qualitatively beyond the things I mentioned, yeah, it, it does affect the feeling of it and the stress level of it. And if you're traveling with a family, I think you're gonna have more issues with certain things than I did. And if you are thinking of buying an electric car and you're worried about that one time of year trip, I just kind of wanted to dispel that myth that you can't do it. You can, you just got to plan ahead a little bit. And things are just going to get better and better in the years beyond 2022 where we are today. So that's a future that I look forward to a lot. And I think you probably do as well if you're watching this video. So if you have any comments or thoughts, put that down below. And as always, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.